Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Rattle Essence. Welcome back to another video. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I sincerely hope everybody at home is staying safe and well. And in today's episode, I'm gonna be going over my top 10 favorite fragrances for the spring of 2020. And this is going to be the niche edition. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin the video, I do want to mention that there will be a giveaway attached to this video. So if you are interested in entering the giveaway, all you need to do is just give this video a like. I would really appreciate that. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. And I'm also going to leave a link to SenseSplit down below in the description section. All I want you to do is visit their website come back here and leave a comment down below with if you had the opportunity to sample any fragrance from sensplit.com, which fragrance would you be? And that will automatically enter you in the giveaway to win a five ML decan of any three fragrances in this list of your choosing. I will pick the winner's comment in one week's time. I'm gonna pin it to the top of the comment thread so that you know that you've won. So make sure to come back to this video in one week to see if you've won. So most of these fragrances, not all, I think all with the exception of two, are available on sensplit.com. They are a fantastic company to deal with. They make decants of your favorite fragrances and they have a lot of really hard to find niche and designer fragrances. Uh, the owner of the company, Shaheen, has been a friend to me for many, many years. So it's a pleasure for me to be able to do this video for him. So thank you all so much for tuning in. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. These are the fragrances that I would like to discuss and these are the fragrances that I see myself wearing a lot in the coming months. I know we're officially in spring and one fragrance that I look forward to wearing, which is actually a fragrance that I've already reviewed on my channel, is by the company Aqua di Parma, and this one is called Osmanthus. Now, I know as a floral ingredient, a lot of guys out there typically shy away from wearing overly floral fragrances. I put myself in that boat or in that wheelhouse as well, with the main exception that there are some florals that I do enjoy, iris, rose, uh, even believe it or not, tuberose, depending on how lightly it's used. But Osmanthus is one of these ingredients that I really vibe with. When you smell it on its own, it can actually come across smelling quite bitter. That is not the case with this fragrance. It's very polished, it's very elegant, it's very professional, and it also comes across smelling rather clean as well. So Osmanthus by Aqua di Parma is a fantastic fragrance. I can't wait to wear more of it now that the weather is actually starting to shape up and it's getting a little bit warmer outside too. The next fragrance on this list is one that I purchased with my own money. I was actually uh, making a trip to Perfumology, which is located in Philadelphia and Pennsylvania. And I wanted to acquire something from this brand and I was interested in purchasing a 50 ml bottle. It turns out that they had none in stock, but I enjoyed the smell so much that I said, give me the 100 ml. And uh, there's only one thing about this fragrance that I'm still challenging uh, myself to like a little bit, um, but I like it when I get certain whiffs of it in the air, but it does feature a note that I'm having a hard time getting along with, and that is a note of juniper berry. So this fragrance by the company Hermetica is called Green Lion. So this is a basil, mint, citrus, and juniper berry sort of a fragrance. So yes, it can actually come across smelling a little bit like a gin and tonic cocktail, but I think it's very bright, it's refreshing, but it also has this woodsy, astringent quality about it. So you have to be a fan of the note of juniper berry. It's not a totally full-blown, in-your-face citrus fragrance. There are actually other fragrances in this list that have a more prominent citrus note. This one, not so much, but if you're looking for a balance between woodsy and citrusy, definitely check this one out. The number eight spot on my list is uh, a fragrance that I forced myself to put in this spot because if I didn't, it would just be in the top three for years to come. And that is a fragrance that I also recently reviewed. Uh, as you can tell, there's a bit of a trend. I'm reviewing a lot of fragrances that I deem appropriate and worthy for the spring months. Typically when I think of spring, I think of fragrances that are floral just because you think of spring, rebirth, flowers and bloom. So I think everybody sort of goes there or that is evoked in many people's minds. But this fragrance in particular is often heralded as the king of spring and for good reason. This one from the House of Creed is called Called green Irish tweed. What you're going to get from this one is lemon, verbena, uh, violet, iris, sandalwood, musk, ambergris, a bit of citrus in the opening as well. Very bright, lively, but very clean cut, professional smelling, 
very refined, masculine, timeless. It's been around since 1985, uh, made by sixth generation Olivier Creed. And so if you haven't tried this one, this is a must have in any person's collection. Like I mentioned before, this is one of those benchmark fragrances where whenever I'm talking about other fragrances, this is one that I often reference just because it's a classic. The next fragrance on this list is uh, another one that I picked up online some time ago, and it's one that I've been meaning to pick up for a very, very long time now. And this one is just a very fun, happy-go-lucky, whimsical sort of a fragrance, not one to be taken as seriously as Green Lion by Hermetica, and I don't intend that to be a pejorative in any way. It's just a fragrance that is much brighter, and I think it's much more sharp in its approach, and it's by the house of imaginary authors. I mean, it is an indie company and this one is called falling into the sea now this has that bright citrus opening and it's really strong on the citrus so I think this in many ways could be a citrus lovers dream in addition to another fragrance that I believe now is discontinued called mosaic uh, but this one has the lemon it has the bergamot but it also has this very bright tart and slightly um, sweet lychee fruit note and so you have the combination of the sweet and the fruity but also the effervescent and the citrusy it has a, a note of tropical flowers in there as well which i totally get and i think that's what allows this fragrance to be appropriate not just for the spring but also for the summer and it has an imaginary note of warm sand so they always try to paint a picture of what you can imagine the fragrance smelling like when you start to zone in on those imaginary notes and i think this one is fantastic another reason why i like this one too also goes to show you why fragrances are so sentimental and poignant and personal and subjective is i actually wore this when i was going to philadelphia so the day that i purchased this fragrance i was actually wearing this fragrance and i was vacationing with the wife pre-quarantine and uh i just have really fond memories of wearing this one and i can't wear, wait to wear this one more often so the next fragrance on this list is one that's a little bit lower on the list not necessarily in the top five just because I think it has a rather simple quality about it, and it's one that I wear whenever I know I want to smell good, I want other people to smell me and think to themselves, wow, this guy smells good. There's something just very plain, but also very interesting about this fragrance as well. It's not as complex of a composition as some of the other fragrances, especially those in the top two or in the top three of this list, but it's a very likable scent, and it's one that I do find myself wearing quite often, so certainly I'm very happy that I purchased this fragrance. And this one from the company Killian Paris, it used to be called by Killian, now it's called Killian Paris. It's called Vodka on the Rocks. If I'm not mistaken, this fragrance used to be an exclusive to Moscow, Russia. Now it's pretty much available everywhere. I think I picked this one up from the boutique. I might be mistaken there, but Vodka on the Rocks, fantastic fragrance. Uh, it doesn't smell so much like vodka. I think if you're looking for a really boozy offering from this company, I would recommend Straight to Heaven. That one has that really strong rum, spicy rum note in the opening. This one, on the other hand, has really more of like a clean, smooth, slightly balmy, slightly creamy quality about it. A little spicy as well, but not overly sharp. It's really just more smooth and clean, but I really enjoy wearing this one. So Vodka on the Rocks, a very likable scent. And they do have a few offerings for the spring and the summertime. Moonlight in Heaven is actually one that I enjoy wearing as well. Uh, but this is one that I think is a little bit more on the mass appealing side. So therefore it's in the number six spot. Number five is actually one that I featured on many lists in the past. It's one that I absolutely love wearing. And if you take a look at the level of the juice in the bottle, uh, you will see that this is one that I've worn a lot. And um, now I'm being told that there is a new version on the market that's been left to macerate a little bit longer. So it's actually a little bit stronger than this one. And this one by the company Parfum de Marly, uh, I did not purchase this one. This one was sent to me by the company, full disclosure there. And this one is called Sedley. It is one of my favorite fragrances. I actually had an opportunity to host an event with the perfumer Olivier Cresp, who I'm sure many of you know if you're really into this hobby, he composed Angel by Thierry Mugler. And he actually um, allowed himself to be on my channel for an interview. If I remember, I'm gonna leave that video down below. And he introduced me to all of the raw materials, or I should say the strongest ones, and I was able to smell them independent of one another. And it really just, developed this appreciation in me for the fragrance. And it's one of the reasons why I enjoy wearing this one because 
now that I smell it post that interview, I'm able to pick up on the frankincense. I'm able to pick up on the mint. I'm able to pick up, up on all of these nuances that are in there. And this is just a fantastic fragrance. Um, the best summer offering from the company hands down. I know we're in spring, you can wear this in, in the spring as well, especially if you go out and pick up the newer iteration of this fragrance, which I plan on doing a versus video in the future. I'm having a bottle of that sent to me shortly as well, but this one is absolutely fantastic. Two from the house that I think are appropriate for this season. Actually, let's make it three. Galloway, Pegasus, and Sedley, but this is my favorite for the season, for the time being. Let's go ahead and get into the top four. I know the number four fragrance on this list. A lot of people I'm sure are getting very sick and tired of me mentioning this fragrance on my channel, uh, but you have to call a spade a spade and not a spoon. This is a fragrance that I have been wearing for many years now. I purchased it with my own money. I think it set me back $140 or something like that. It's made by one of my favorite perfumers who is Bertrand du Chafour. And it is one of those fragrances that really solidified in me the fact that I love this person so so much that as a creative director for Navitas Parfum, I actually selected him to be one of the perfumers for the project. This fragrance is by Haute d'Italie and it's called Jardin du Poète. The fragrance translates to the poet's garden. I like explaining this fragrance the way that I like to explain it, which is 70% of it smells like freshly cut cucumber. 20% of it smells like rose and a very lively organic rose, not too jammy or anything like that. And the remaining 10% smells like an assortment of really vibrant and bright citrus ingredients. I love this fragrance so much. I featured it in the number one spot, I'm sure, in lists in the past, as I've done with Sedley by Parfum de Marly. And there's a reason why you see these fragrances coming back year after year because I have to remain true to myself. These are fragrances that I love and I've mentioned it on camera and I really have a hard time changing my mind in the case of a lot of these fragrances. And this one, The Poet's Garden, is such a fantastic, fresh, uh, crisp, slightly floral, but definitely fruity fragrance. Fruity in a citrus way, that is. The next fragrance on this list, and now we're getting into the top three, so these fragrances are super, super special to me. Uh, these are fragrances that I have covered on my channel, except for the number one fragrance, which is a fragrance that I purchased within the past two months, but I'll discuss that. And if you're interested in me reviewing it, also let me know as well. But the number three fragrance on this list is one that I have been loving for quite some time now, and this one by the company Zerzhov is called Uden Overdose. Now, I do have familiarity with Uden, which was one of the original Shooting Stars fragrances. I have familiarity with Uden, Kobe, Neo, Dajala, Lua, uh, Ibitira, pretty much every fragrance uh, that is out there I've actually smelled. And this one is composed, I'm pretty confident, it's composed by perfumer Christian Carbonell, who has also worked on fragrances for uh, the brand Navitas Parfum, of which I am a creative director. And for this particular fragrance, you have tobacco blossom coupled with really bright and lively citrus ingredients. I remember as I was wearing it one day, I thought to myself, oh, this is kind of reminding me of Naxos a little bit, which also has a tobacco uh, vibe going on in there, but just the presence of the citrus that's in here is just so bright and makes it so accommodating for the spring season. It's just a fantastic smell, and you can tell when you smell it, it is super high quality, super stoked to have this one in my collection. So the number two fragrance on this list is a fragrance that was sent to me by the company. However, I have owned this fragrance in a different concentration, which was not sent to me by the company. So I guess you can say this is my second bottle of it. And so you might notice that the level of the liquid in the bottle is close to the top. That's actually because I've been wearing the stronger concentration, which I've had in my collection for the past two years now. This fragrance is by Roja Parfum, and this one is called Elysium. This is one of the most amazing, fresh, citrusy, smooth, clean, musky men's fragrances that are currently on the market. I cannot tell you how happy I feel every time I wear this fragrance, how amazing I feel, how much of a confidence booster this is. This is so perfectly polished, so clean, so elegant smelling, and there's nothing about it that is off-putting. There's nothing about it that is aggressive. There's nothing about it that pushes any envelopes or is challenging or anything like that. But in addition to not having these things. It also has the quality of it being very complex, very likable, 
and I think it's just an amazing masterpiece of a fragrance from the company Roja Parfum. I'm so happy to have this one in my collection. And this is one that I actually wore two days ago and I am in love with it. Every year I put it on the back burner or I put it on the shelf for a few months at a time. And then when I revisit it, I think to myself, why did I go so long without wearing this fragrance? And so it's nice having that reminder, but um, I'm loving this one. I can't wait to wear this one more often in the next few months. And the number one fragrance on this list is a fragrance that I have been loving for quite some time now, uh, for the past two months, which is actually when I purchased it. And like I said, this one was purchased with my own money. I purchased this one from Perfumology in Philadelphia. And I have a really strong appreciation for what this perfumer is capable of doing. He does have a degree in chemistry, so he's very familiar with the volatility of different ingredients and which ingredient works well and pairs with which other ingredient and uh, as an indie perfumer he certainly has his own dna that he weaves into his compositions where when you smell something that he's done you say to yourself ah yep that is one of his fragrances and there's something about this fragrance it contains an ambergris note and it's a sort of icy ambergris note that it's very bright it's enigmatic, it's difficult to understand and internalize, but it also has these grounding green notes, uh, mainly the note of fur. So it's this really nice, likable, and enigmatic contrast of the green facets, but also this ambergris that is so fresh. It has a lemon balm in there, it has basil in there. It's this very open composition, very ethereal. And this one by the company Tower Perfumes is called L'Air des Alpes Suisse. I didn't want to mispronounce it. L'Air des Alpes Suisse. I also get confused because he has another one called L'Air du Desert Marocain, which was the second release from the company. But this is absolutely amazing. He does such a fantastic job with kind of taking the wearer and putting them into this mindset and painting an olfactory picture of what the fragrance is supposed to smell like and what it's supposed to evoke. With L'Air du Desert Marocain, you're in the middle of the Moroccan desert. It's very dry, it's dusty, it's arid, but there's also like a faint sweetness lurking underneath. It's just so beautiful. And then you have fragrances like Lonesome Rider or Lone Star Memories, where you kind of have like this image of a cowboy uh, just sitting in front of a campfire, uh, cooking his food and it's just amazing you have this smoky quality in it this one he managed to do it again in 2019 so this one came out last year and this one just has this very icy ambergris note there are a couple of floral notes in there as well including orchid but it's this perfect balance of icy fresh minty ozonic floral and green it's a fantastic fragrance. I'm so happy that I purchased it. And um, I mean, it's not likely that Andy Tower is watching this video, but if for some reason he does happen to watch this video, I just wanna say I'm very proud of you. Keep up the fantastic work. You are such a talented individual and you will always have my support. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. These have been my top 10 fragrances for the spring of 2020. I'm so excited to wear these fragrances more uh, in these next few months now that I'm cooped up at home. And again, I hope everybody home is staying safe and healthy. Once again, if you are interested in sampling, at least the first eight from the company. Uh, you may do so at scentsplit.com. I'm gonna leave links down below. Definitely check them out. These are fantastic fragrances, whether you wanna get a one ML sample or something a little bit bigger, uh, they do definitely satisfy all of your needs. And the company owner, Shaheen, is just an incredible, incredible person. So thank you all once again so much for tuning in. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like the video. And if you are new to this channel and you took something of value from this video, I would love it if you could support this video by subscribing to it. It's really simple. All you have to do is click the red subscribe button in the corner. And please also don't forget to enable notifications by clicking on the bell icon and enabling all notifications. This way, whenever I upload any of these types of videos, they will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future content. Thanks again for watching. I love you all. We'll see you soon. Bye.